Hey guys, welcome back to another outstanding video. No, I'm kidding. It's not outstanding. Um, I haven't uploaded in a while. And, but I've been meaning to upload this video for a very long time. I just have not got around to it yet. But for all my Amulet fans that are out there, I'm sure you are excited. This review is very late. It's very late. It's extremely late. But I'm shooting it now. Um, Amulet Book 9. We have this series. I mean, even my own hype for this book has died down after reading it like three weeks ago and not picking it up since then. <laughs> so I still love the book. I mean, it, it is very memorable how much I loved the book for the course of a week. I could not stop thinking about this book. Um I got it the day it came out, February 6th, at Barnes & Nobles. Um, the book went... I mean, the first thing I'm going to state is that the book went f uh, full circle with the whole storyline. It tied back the entire storyline back to the Earth, back to Earth, and back to Emily's life. Um, there's spoilers ahead, but I'm sure all of you have read the book by now, so if you want to leave, you can, but... Uh, the book has a lot of things that if you really haven't read the book and you really want to read the book, then you should definitely click off this video and watch it some other time and make sure to watch it some other time. Save it to your playlist. Watch later. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the book introduces a lot of characters. Um, we have four new – five – yeah, five new stone keepers, Ronin and her four students. Her four students are all overpowered. Um, they're all buffed, as they would say in today's game. They can all turn into their monster form and turn back while still having control of the stone. And Kazu Kibiwishi tries to insert physics into this book, kind of, for a second. Um, he... he uh, talks about the notions of reality and what the amulet science may look like briefly in this note of like infinity and the implications of the universe here. Um, I might go into other things about the book in some other video analyzing the various topics that are brought up. Um, but for today, we will be doing a review and I'll do, be doing a general summary of the plot itself. Um, as most summaries I've seen on YouTube, I mean, most reviews on YouTube do. They go over the plot. They do a review. It's a good way of organizing it, you know. I mean, I will say that when the four students were introduced and the book, like, I think this was kind of the worst part of the book for me. It wasn't horrible. I'm just saying it wasn't the, it was my least favorite part of the book. When the four students could suddenly do everything that, like, Emily could also do you know it was and it was almost kind of like it took away a little bit of emily's individualism in her actually being the main character it didn't really take it away fully but i felt like a lot of the things a lot of the parts of what emily has been going through on her journey a lot of the things she's been learning to do with her stone were kind of like you know she had one guide, Ronan, you know, these kids had one guide, Ronan, and Ronan was a very liberal so stonekeeper, which seemed to have a lot of knowledge potential or intellectual potential in the ways of the stone. And, you know, you imagine if she had just taught Emily, which, I mean, that would have never happened and never would have liked to happen. I mean, it wouldn't even work because the, the story isn't that, um, but... These new stone keepers are supposed to represent that there's new hopes on the horizon, that the world will be rebuilt. I do like the narrative that stone keepers are builders and not destroyers um, in the novel or in this graphic novel. Um, but there's something – and briefly I felt like these students kind of took away from ev – everything that made Emily special or certain things that made Emily a special character in her type of uh, 
Singularity as the main character. Uh, however, I thought that when I was reading this this specific part of the book, then it jump cut to Emily going to the void and the big twist or big reveal um, of the book, which really tied the book full circle, was the fact that it turned out that Emily or the stone, Icol, is just a computer program created by robots. And somehow the author included around three or four themes, maybe two or three themes within the book. Um, there are many themes, for example, the implications of what AI means. I mean, the robots which create Icol, they don't, we don't know, they're very mysterious characters. We don't know what they necessarily imply. All we know is that they were created eventually by sales Charon. Um, and they eventually took over the likes of the earth to find themselves a new home because earth was, uh, something was happening. Their planet was dying or whatnot. So they had to leave. And I refers to these robots as his masters. Now I call to me, seems almost like a rogue program. Um, and the, because there's a point where the robots help Emily and, you know, it's the, the dynamic between Emily and I call is kind is interesting in that, um, it's, it's almost like I call is, like it's a one step over the other game where I Cole's kind of a villain that's never really going to go away in a certain light. I mean, in the eighth book, we kind of knew that um, because we saw an old Emily still fighting I Cole. So, and there's a scene here that I've actually accidentally or coincidentally chaotically turned to um, about old Emily talking to her younger self about the hard times that they may go through and the light at the end of the tunnel. Perseverance. Um, the book was, I mean, another theme in the book was uh, that the idea of pushing through to a new chapter, being re-enlightened and recognizing that there's a part of one's life that has to move on in the bigger portion of what they mean. Um, Emily is and uh, realizes that in the book and the author ties the book series as if it's more of just the first large adventure of Emily's life and that there are more to come and that he's only told that much of her story and that he's never really going to tell anything else, which is fine. This is a book series and so... Emily has one character arc and she'll have another later, whatever that may be. It's not something for the reader to decide. It's just something that will end the, is, is a conclusion to a series like such. And so we recognize this and, you know, I love the final, the final shot, the ending where it's where Emily and her family are walking on earth among these trees and mountains and they're near their countryside home. <clears throat> And Emily has become extremely mature. You see, there's one of the robots there looking upon her. Um, but the stones, they are, the stone is kind of a simulation, or it's not a simulation, but it was a computer program. I call it a computer program. Um, I call reveals this to Emily. Emily's a human being. So the, the dynamic was interesting. Um, the scope of the amulet verse has been like from books seven through nine uh, was widened greatly to an exponential rate. You know, I, I find that the series is kind of built in it's a it's a trilogy of trilogies, you know. It's nine books, three times three, you know. The first three books was kind of one phase, you could say. The fourth to the sixth was another. Seven through nine was another. In certain ways, I divide that through the scope in which they're outlining the story and how much Emily figures out 
in this kind of character arc she has throughout the entire series. Trellis ends up denying the elf king position and Gab Gablin becomes king of the elves. Um, he become Trellis instead becomes the leader of the guardian council. Um, one thing then Emily, yeah, that's basically what happens. Um, Another thing is Emily is very overpowered. Well, she's not overpowered. She's supposed to be overpowered. Uh, she easily takes down two stone giants. Uh, like. With just just with one hit casually, she's like, you know, I'll turn your hate into something else. And, you know, you can like. She basically super girls, these stone giants, these stone giants, they shoot their powerful beams at her and she just reflects it and like shoots it back at them and this art is impeccable it's the best art uh kazu kibuishi has done in the coloring and the detail especially this scene i saw i remember this scene in the trailer so every time i look at it i think it's moving because this was the exact scene in the book trailer so it's funny i also love these stone giants um Now, when they're when they turn back into good stone giants, I <laughs> they kind of look like dolls that you can play with. <laughs> like they look ten times less intimidating. Um, at then, I mean, obviously that's supposed to be the case. But I I love this design, this purple design of them. These these gigantic spiders with stones on their faces, humanoid looking. Um. And nature. Um, I would say, though, in my ultimate review, that the final book was the best book. I mean, that's a good thing. That's a good thing that the final book is the best book. Uh, it's supposed to be. It's the conclusion. It's definitely the longest book, and I can see why Kazu took a very long time to make it. He also made it good, so... I guess it was worth the six year. It was more like five and a half year wait. Um, but five and a half years. I went through the entirety of middle school waiting for this book. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Wave Rider. The, the immediate metaphor with the waves is mentioned on like the first pages of the book. There are many ways in which Emily is riding the waves. She's calling out to other people, kind of in the infinity of the universe. Um, Emily also destroys all the shadows in two hits, and shadows kind of just become... Like, the shadows are still a bit mysterious to me. I know that they basically do work for... Um, like... Icol because they form into Icol at some point. It's probably one of the coo the best looking scenes in the entire entirety of the book. I have to figure out where it is. It's toward the latter half of the book. Oh yeah, we're getting near it. Closer we go. See the robot helps her here. I'm trying to just find this. Oh yeah, this this this. Um, the shadows, I guess, are just a part of Eichel here. Um, this is one of the best things I think he's drawn in Amulet, in my opinion, in my opinion. I love this when, you know, uh, but, you know, if I was going to rate this book out of 10, I, you know, not 10, I don't really see... There's not, like, a problem with the book. It's not like I have a grudge against it or anything. No, it's a good book. Good to the conclusion. I feel like Kazu also recognized that his audience would be a little bit older when they read this book. So he really was able to emphasize these larger themes in the book um, better. Although I don't know if that's a direct implication of the age or it was like that all along. I believe it's more like that all along. So... Yeah, but 
you know, 10 out of 10, 100 out of 100 full marks in whatever way you want to grade it. Um, let me, kn- me know your opinions of the ninth book if you've read it in the comments. Um, make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. There are many other ones that are going to come out. So tune in. Uh.